So welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. This is a new human experience podcast and today is February the 25th, 2021. The topic for this evening is I am all that. So um, throughout February, I have kind of been sharing with all of you my journey of letting go of old um, ways of being. I've looked at um, you know, how, how I used to think of authority, meaning authority as in my parents and all, let's say the, the, the people that are older than me and supposedly have more um, expertise than I have. And then also looking at in, in what love is. So my old, um, my old way of thinking about what, what love, romance and all that is and also, think, and then also last week I talked about my experience with my daughter. And so that's really all of that, all of these getting rid of old stories. So what's the, what's the purpose of getting rid of these old stories? I actually just want to um, put something, have, like put, put something more solid is that um, I'm not getting rid of the old beliefs because there's anything wrong with the old beliefs and far be it. They have been, they are kind of like, these old beliefs are kind of like um, training wheels. Before we know any better, we we take on other people's beliefs and we play around with them um, as in using those beliefs to, to be as creative as we can while living our, our lives as it is. So that's really what I mean by playing around with it is to really take on someone else's beliefs and, and sometimes it's, we do that very unconsciously. And sometimes we do that more consciously. I, I would say that when I was younger, it's something that I, I did very unconsciously. Whereas um, when I get older, when I get to be more of an adult, I take on other people's beliefs more consciously. And like and so that's the way it is that we take on other people's beliefs and we kind of give it a go at it and try to use it and in our daily lives and see how we like it or not whether it works for us or not and that's what we we have been doing or at least at the very least what i have been doing and there's nothing wrong with that there that's the way we learn how to do things. We, we just, you know, um, take someone else's approach and just run with it until we hit a snack, until we, we kind of um, can't create anything new with that or anything new that we like with it. So then um, we, we know at some level that we need to change. And so shedding these beliefs is really part of growing, part of being more mature. And as we get to be more mature, we get to the, the, the part where we become more conscious of when we take on beliefs and and become more conscious of how these beliefs are working or not working in our lives. And, um, and uh, our beliefs, even though we are not our beliefs, we, we have beliefs, but we are not our beliefs, just like we have our body, but we are not our body, is that by taking on these beliefs, we um, experience it 
and we kind of identify, we've created an identity out of all these beliefs. And when we have been doing that for a while, it, and, and it, especially if we don't get into the habit of um, periodically looking at our beliefs and, and just letting go of the old ones. If, and, and especially if we had some sort of um, a trauma, it, that, that made us um, somehow adopt some beliefs in order to, to make sure that we don't um, get into the same situation again. Usually that's when the, when we hit some sort of a trauma, when we have some sort of trauma, that's when we hang on to whatever beliefs that got us through those trauma much more um, tightly, much more unhealthily as we would with others. With others, it's easier and when it's time for us to let go of the, of the beliefs we would, it's, it's much easier. Whereas if, it, if there's a trauma associated with it and we haven't done the, the work of confronting those limiting, um, those, those traumas, the, the emotions, if we haven't really worked through them, then whatever the beliefs that is somehow still supported by the, the, the unprocessed emotions are there. So what I'm trying to say is that we have somehow created an, an identity and some people call it an ego. And um, so we, we've created this alternative identity that we have been playing around with and there's nothing wrong with that also. Um, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the ego, even though um, our ego did really um, help us to have some rather colorful experiences, but still there's nothing wrong with the ego. The only thing is that if we, um, if we don't look beneath the ego, then we're missing something, especially if we don't do the work of, if we don't do the work of um, processing any traumatic experience, any traumatic emotions, and, and maybe not all of, of, uh, of the people that are listening to this, and especially uh, I would say myself, like I would not have thought that I have had some trauma in my life because looking back on my, my childhood is like, well, it's not the, I wouldn't say I have a charming life. However, relatively speaking, my, my life so far had been really quite um, charmed. There's no big ups and downs, nothing that, that really um, would have created too much of a trauma. However, trauma is really in the eye of the beholder. What is, what is traumatic to, to some people is a walk in the park for others. So, so looking back, there are still some, some emotions that haven't quite um, worked through yet. And, and fortunately, I think as the, the, the energy is much more supportive of letting go of things, I, I say that in that um, it seems like in the last couple of months, I was actually able to and really guided to let go of a lot more, or I should say another big layer of the old, um, the old emotional, I would say, um, maybe trauma is not the, the, the exact word for it, but it's really some unprocessed emotions and beliefs um, that are 
that came with those emotions and those events. So, and as I was able to let go of that, of those, I found that there is another layer. There's another layer of me that is much bigger and much more expansive. And so, which really, really um, leads me to the, 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 one of the points that I want to bring out this evening is, is that when we are doing the work of letting go, it is really to let go of the old, of the, the small identities, because our beliefs, our, um, the way that we have always been, been reacting to certain people, certain circumstances, actually creates this, this box around us. And when we don't do the work of letting go of the, the emotions that's supporting us to, to hang on to those beliefs and em emotions, they really um, limits us. And it's, and this limitation you don't necessarily see until you have let go of a big part of the old, the old part that you think of as you, and you think that, you know, well, that's me, that's, that's my character, I mean, character is fate, and it can't be changed. Um, it's really not the, that way. Everything can be changed because underneath that, that small, smaller, I should say, not small, but smaller identity, there is another part of you that is much bigger than who you may consciously believe that is you. There is a you behind the, there's a big you behind that, that smaller box of identity that you have identified as yourself. So that is really the, um, I would say the treasure that we get to reclaim when we start to do the, the work of letting go of any um, emotions and past events that, that is still somehow coloring why we want to choose certain beliefs over others. So there is this, that's the reward. The reward is that we get to know who we truly are that is much more expansive and much bigger than the, um, the egoic me. And I think that is really the, the, the best way of looking at it. So that is one of the points that I want to mention this evening. And then the other one that I really want to, to say is actually um, on the surface is kind of quite contrary to the first to the, the first thing I mentioned. The first thing I mentioned is that you need to let go. And then I want to know that once you let go of the smaller you, one of the, the, the more egoic part of you, and you get to know another level of you, then this is when the this the second point that I want to talk about would kick in. So the second point I want to talk about is that um, it's really to get to know what resonates with your truth. The truth is the the referring to the the bigger, the more expensive part of ourselves, and the and really to to grow up spiritually 
is really to follow our own guidance, is to really get to know who we are beneath all of these smaller and, and more constrictive identities, to get to know that bigger part of us. And that's really part of growing up spiritually, is to actually discover your own guidance. And when you are more comfortable with discovering your own guidance and really get to the part where you have a feel of who you truly are beyond that smaller boxes of the, the egoic you, then it is really to hang on to who you are, to follow your own guidance, no matter what is going on outside no matter who says what, and no matter who resonates with something that is other than what resonates with you, is when you get to know who you are. And the more important work to do is to follow that guidance. And when you can truly integrate and be coherent with who you are and and be able to work out any of the conflicts of um, between you, who you think you are, and also other people's, um, or I would I would say all the ideas outside of you. When you can be able to um, be able to be coherent, then you can walk in any crowded room with crowded with all of the other people's ideas, their, their, um, what is true for them. I'm not saying that it's not that what is true for other people is not important. I'm just saying that being spiritually mature is really to be able to hold your own, no matter what is happening outside. So being able to do that is the next phase of spiritual maturity. However, it has to, it's, it has to come, it comes after you've let go of the, the small you. And then when you get a sense of the bigger part of you, then it's no longer a, a matter of, um, it's no longer a matter of needing to defend yourself. Is that when you know who you are, you, it actually frees you to be able to listen to other people's opinions and be able to interact with those opinions without falling in the fear that you, um, you may be swept away and not being able to um, know your own truth is when you are when you are spiritually mature and when you are so good at knowing what resonates with you and what does not resonate with you and really give yourself permission to explore if some ideas does not resonate with you, what is the purpose of that dissonance? and be able to work out a way to integrate any, any of these um, dissonance and still be able to become coherent within yourself. When you can get to that part, then you, you become a, a force to be reckoned with, I, I think would be the, the, the word for it. Because then you become like a bamboo. You 
it's okay to bend, but you won't break because you have that because you're in tune with the truth of who you are to the extent that you don't mind trying on new ideas. You don't mind making mistakes because you, you are so, you're already so sure that you can come back to your own center, no matter how far you need it to bend in order to accommodate other people because each and every one of us is simply another another part of the one soul so how do we do that so how do we do that how do we get to that how do we get to that part it's it's really to be the observer it's it's i for me i i find that that is really the easiest way is to is to really understand that especially when we are at the the point of um trying to find who we truly are is to understand that our the voices in our head that tells us no you should do this you should do that those voices they are not they're not us the even the emotions we feel um even the fear we feel, the, the anger we feel, the sadness we feel, any of the emotions, it's not us. Those emotions are created by our beliefs. They are created by things that we have encountered in the past. And they're not us. They... So when you really know that no matter what's going on, even if inside your head, you, your head is telling you, oh, I'm sad because of X, Y, Z, for example. That's just, that's just a suggestion. It doesn't mean that you, you have to feel sad. And when you know that, when you know that, um, whether it is your own conversation within your head or another conversation or an actual conversation with someone else that's doing that, it does not mean that you have to listen to those. Sometimes I think for the longest time, I find it hard to, like it's easy for me to um, not listen to other people, but it's not so easy for me to not listen to the voices in my own head. So I, th I thought, well, they are my voice. The, I'm, I, must be, uh, I must pay attention to that. But no, you don't. They are our feelings and our beliefs. They are not us. And our beliefs are not us, our, our feelings are not us, our body is not us. I'm not saying that we shouldn't pay attention to any of those. I'm just saying that know that you are much more than that. You have beliefs, but the beliefs that you are um, using in this moment is not, is most likely, I would say, it's most likely not going to be the beliefs that you're going to hang on to for the rest of eternity. Know that, really know that. Um, any beliefs, any emotions is not really 
you. You have them, but they are not you. They don't define you. They don't dictate how you need to act, how you you actually need to feel. When you become that observer, when you get good at observing your thinking. Observing your beliefs, observing the emotions that's coming up from you, observing what your body is doing, and and when you're observing, really, also in your mind, start to ask the question: Is this me in this moment? Is it something that I want to choose to play with in this moment, and give yourself that freedom to not pay attention to emotions that、um, that has has very little relevance for this moment. And I also want to. To mention that when you start to become the the observer, you have access to a different state of being, a different state of being than when you are being the when you are being in the box when you are when you feel. Helpless and powerless to choose what you feel. When you know that you can choose how you feel, no matter what is happening around you, no matter what emotions is coming up for you, that that sense of peace, that sense of Joy and I don't think joy is the right word for it. I would say that it it is a a grace of being in grace, because you're no longer、uh, slave to your emotions, slave to your beliefs. You're no longer slave to your body. That no matter what is going on, you become free within to be able to choose and to observe. Your feelings, observe emotions, and observe your body. When you can do that, then、um, you you're able to access that that sense of being in grace of、um, of being in bliss, that freedom. That is. Really,、um, that's really what the fifth dimension is about, for me, anyways, is to be able to tap into and know that you can create, you can choose, you are not limited. That really is the、um, the the basis of. Fifth dimension that's really ready emotionally and spiritually to be in the fifth dimension, and it all starts by really、um, observing using that. I I think that is for me the the most important tool. To have, and it's a very simple tool.、Um, simple, not necessarily easy, because we are so we're so used to. We're actually quite used to reacting from、um, our own emotions. That when we first, at first, switch into the observation mode. It does not feel natural. 
However, the more you you do that, the easier it is for the 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 more reactive parts of you to fall away, and the more you become liberated and be true to become true and starting to get to know who you are underneath all of those bundles of emotions that has been kind of dictating your your life for um, a long time and when you can get to that part where you it's easy for you to step out and just observe what's going on without reacting to it, then you really get to, to know how to, how easy it is actually to let go of the parts of you that no longer serves you. And, and for me, that is really, um, all that I want to talk about today. Um, one more thing, just to wrap it up, is why? Why did I do the the? Why did I say for the topic for this evening is I am all that. Is that um, when we step into being the observer, then we step into being able to switch and pivot between the small, smaller sense of me and the eternal side of me. And to know that um, we're here on earth, not to be the eternal us, not to be the, the infinite us. When we are playing on earth, we are, we are actually consenting to play the, the smaller, the more um, limited part of ourselves. But that does not mean that it is a, a disadvantage. It is actually a, a, an advantage that when we get to know that there's two sides and it's the same, like we are the same person, but on the one hand, when we are on Earth right now, playing in this playground called Earth, there are certain sets of limitations. However, limitations is maybe not the right word for it. Let's say that this is the rules of the game, that if we want to play on Earth, these are the rules of the game. And within the confines of this, of this rule of the game, these rules of the game, then we get to play. However, we also need to know, it's, it's, it's to really get to know that we are not that. We are not the, the, the limited part of us. We actually are the infinite source part of us as well. And when we can pivot between the two is that to know that you are both at the same time, it allows us uh, to play as a limited version of us without being completely immersed and lose ourselves in this game. So the, that's why this um, being in the observer mode is so powerful, even though it's such a simple tool. It's because when we can get into that observer mode, that's how we can pivot. That's how we can choose. Do we want to play with this idea? Do we want to play with this belief in this moment? But that does not mean that we are not all that. We are not the, the eternal part of us. We are, we are that as well. 
it is just that when we are on earth, we are, there are certain rules of the games that we need to play by. And when we can really exercise to be the observer, that's when we can actually pivot. That's when we can actually become, when we can actually, even though we can only play with a limited part of us, but we can actually change our, our boundaries. There is no, there's no limits to how far we can stretch those boundaries. We can play with one belief today. And, and when we feel that we um, don't resonate with it anymore, we can choose a completely different belief and play with that. So that allows us to be in touch with the limited part of us as well as the expansive part of us. And that's what I mean by that. I am all that. We are all that. We, when we are here on earth playing, we, we have this body. Even though this body is not us, just like these beliefs is not who I am. I am so much more than that. But while I'm here, I would play with certain beliefs. I would use this body as my, as a way for me to interact with everyone around me. However, I, when I can be the observer though, I can be both at the same time. I can be this limited me. I can be this body. I can play with this body, but also know that there is so much more to me than this body. And being able to integrate all of that, that be makes us become so much more powerful. And that's all we'd like to talk about this evening.